Any web app needs to be able to persist data somehow, and relational databases like MySQL are always a good option for a web app. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect a Node application to a MySQL database to query and insert data, and then I'll show you how to connect that to an Express application to see how all the pieces work together. Yo, I pitch wisdom for the kids them. Solid as a prism keeps a funky rhythm. I'm assuming you already have MySQL installed on your computer. And if you don't, I'll leave a link in the description to another video showing you how to get that set up. But once you have it installed, you should be able to access the database using either MySQL Workbench or the terminal. And I'm going to be using terminal to connect to MySQL, which I can connect to using the root user by typing MySQL U root, that's the user, dash P for password and hitting enter and then I can enter in my password hit enter again and then I'm in my SQL where I can type any SQL commands like show databases and right now I should just be able to see the default databases in my SQL. For this example I have some SQL already written to set up a database and a simple table for a note-taking application. So the note table will just have an ID, a title, contents and the time that it was created and then I'm just going to insert two dummy notes into the database so we have some data to work with. And I could run this file or I can just copy and paste all this SQL code and dump it into the terminal here. And now if I show the databases again, I'll be able to see that I have my notes app. And if I select star from notes, I'll be able to see all my notes that are actually stored in the database. And if you want more information on how to write create table statements or SQL in general, I'll leave links in the description to other SQL resources. So now I'm actually gonna set up my node application. Uh, I'm gonna create a database.js file, and this is where I'm gonna put all of my code that connects to MySQL and queries the database. And before I write any code in here, I'm gonna go back into terminal and I'm gonna run npm init-y to create a package.json file because I wanna use ES modules. So I'm gonna use type module here. And this will just allow me to write import and export statements rather than using the old CommonJS modules. But you can choose to use CommonJS, you'll just have to tweak the syntax slightly, but the logic will still be the same. So now we need to install the MySQL library. So I'm gonna type npm i MySQL2. And you've gotta make sure that you install MySQL2 and not just MySQL, because MySQL2 is a much better version of the library, it has a lot of improvements, and that's the one that we wanna use. So back in my database.js file, I'm gonna import MySQL from MySQL2, and then I need to connect to the database. So before I connected from terminal and I'm connected to the database running on my local machine, uh, this could be a MySQL database in the cloud, but to make things easy and simple, we usually use a database on our local machine when developing applications. So this is a database on localhost. The user I used to log in as was root and the database that I've created is my notes app database. So in here, I'm gonna ask MySQL to create a pool for me using those details. So the host in this case is gonna be localhost, my local machine. And sometimes people have a little bit of difficulty when entering localhost in here. So instead of localhost, I'm gonna put 127.0.0.1, which is what localhost resolves to. So this is less likely to cause any errors since this is the end result anyway. Then we need the user, which in my case is gonna be root, the password, which in my case is just an empty string, and the database, which is going to be the notes app. And I love how GitHub Copilot is just auto-filling these things for me. So we're creating a pool here and we need to store that in a variable. I'm gonna call this pool. And a pool is kind of what it sounds like. It's a collection of connections to the database. So instead of creating a brand new connection for each query that I want, I'm gonna have a pool of connections that can be reused, which can be really handy as your application starts to scale. And one more thing I wanna to add to the end here is uh, dot promise because this will allow us to use the promise API version of MySQL instead of having to use callback functions. So for this entire demonstration, I'll be able to use async await rather than having to use the old callback version. So I'm just gonna run this code quickly just to make sure there are no uh, errors. We shouldn't see any output, but if there were no errors connecting to the database, then we should see nothing, which is great. And now I'm gonna use this to actually query the database. So on the pool object, we can call the query method and pass in a plain old query to MySQL. So I wanna select star from notes, uh, and this is a promise, so I'm actually gonna use async await here. 
uh, const result equals pull.query select star from notes. So this is just the exact same query I might enter into terminal or MySQL workbench to get a list of all the notes from the notes table. But now I'm gonna run that directly in my application uh, and I'm gonna console log the result out here. And what I'm expecting to see is those two notes, right? I have two notes in the database, this one and this one. And I'm expecting that when I run my JavaScript code, now if I go back, if I run this JavaScript code that's doing that exact same select statement, I'm gonna expect to see those two notes uh, being logged out to the console. So if I run this code, you can see there's actually a lot more going on here. There's a bunch of information, a bunch of information. This is way too much information. But if I scroll all the way to the top, there are the two notes that exist in my database. And they're just being represented as JavaScript objects, an array of JavaScript objects, which is fantastic. You know, you select a bunch of things from a database, they come back as an array of JavaScript objects. And this is just metadata about the data types within the table that can be handy, but we probably don't really care about. So notice here that the outer data structure is an array that contains two children. Uh, the first array is the actual array I care about, it's the array of data. And the second array is a bunch of metadata that I don't really care about. So the rows in the table, I'm gonna create a new variable for this are result zero, the first item in the result array. So if I console log just the rows now, then I can see this is just the objects that I wanted from the database. And a more common way of writing this code is to use destructuring assignment. So the exact same result would be to uh, put square brackets around rows here. And this is gonna get the first item out of the results array, store it in a variable called rows, and then the output should be exactly the same. And now to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm gonna wrap this inside of a function called uh, get notes. And I'll run that query and then just have this function return the rows out of this function. So anytime I wanna get all of the notes from the database, all I have to do is call await get notes. I need assignment in there. And then I can console log the notes. And that will give me the exact same output. And I definitely wanna write more queries here, but before I do that, I wanna talk about environment variables. These are variables that exist on the system, on the computer that your code is running on. Uh, and they're the things that look like this. When you get process.emv.host or something like that, you might've seen it before. And in a situation like this, we definitely wanna use environment variables instead of hard coding the values in here. And there's two reasons that we wanna do that. Environment variables like this exist on the computer. So they allow us to modify the values in an application depending on where that application is actually running. So on my machine, I wanna to connect to the database on localhost, but if I deploy this to the cloud on Heroku or something, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure the host is to a MySQL database also in the cloud. And I might be deploying that app or someone else might be deploying it. Either way, I wanna be able to change this value without actually having to come into the code and modify my JavaScript. Another reason is that sensitive information like the password here, I don't wanna hard code into the app and I definitely don't wanna commit into source control. So it allows us to configure things easier and it allows us to hide information a little bit easier just by using environment variables instead of hard coding the values in here. So what I'm gonna do is specify environment variables for each of these and I'm actually gonna prefix these with MySQL. So we'll go MySQL user instead of root. MySQL password and MySQL database. There we go, almost. But now we need to actually set these environment variables somewhere. And the most common way to do this when developing a JavaScript application is to put this in a .env file. So I'm gonna create a brand new file called .env, yes, with a dot, and put these values in that file. And I'm gonna set this equal to the values that we had before, 127.0.0.1. Uh, the user is root, my password is actually empty, uh, and my database is notes app, just like that. And this file, you'll never commit into Git into your source control. It will only exist on your machine and everyone else that runs this application will have to have their own version of the .env file. And to make sure the application actually knows about this file, we are gonna install the .env library. 
And this is a library that will just load in the environment variables for us without us having to do anything. But we do need to import the .env library and configure just like that. So we'll put that at the top of the database.js file and then everything should still be working the same. We should still be able to connect to the database, yep, because it's still using those values, but we're now, instead of hard coding those values into the app, we're using environment variables. So let's write some more queries in here. Right now we have a function to get notes, but I might just want to get a single note using its ID. So I'm going to create another function here called get note singular, where I can pass in the ID of a note, and then this should just return that single note. So I'm gonna basically start with what I had up here, uh, but I'm gonna use a template string so I can write this on multiple lines. Uh, and what I wanna do is select star from notes, where ID equals, and here I have to input the ID and it's suggesting that I use a question mark, which is the correct thing. But first I'm gonna do the incorrect thing, which would be to just dump in the ID as its plain old value here. And this will work. I could run my get note function. Uh, let's see, let's pass in one. I just wanna get the first note. And this will run select star from notes where ID equals one, which should get me the first note. Uh, I'll just rename this to be more explicit. And if I rerun the code here, we can see it gives me the first note. But just dumping the value into the string here is bad practice because this value wasn't written as part of the query and it's likely that it will come over an HTTP request from an end user. So we can't trust this value. This is an untrusted value. And when we have a value that we don't trust, what we'll do is put a question mark instead of the actual value. So this entire statement will get sent to MySQL as an incomplete statement with a question mark instead of the actual value. And then separately, we'll send the ID, we just put this in an array as the second parameter to the query function. And MySQL will manage this value and this query to make sure that the query still run correctly, but that the untrusted data isn't part of the query. Because if we did allow untrusted data here, this could lead to SQL injection attacks where people can basically get any sort of data they want from your database, potentially delete data, but much more dangerous is that they can just query whatever they want. They can get access to pretty much anything. And again, I've got a video on that. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna watch it. But let's just rerun this code for now to make sure it still works. And there we go, it is still working even though we have that question mark. And by the way, this syntax is called a prepared statement. We're sending the SQL and the values to the database completely separately. One thing I want you to notice here is that I'm requesting a single note. This is always going to be a single object because I'm saying where the ID equals a value. And since the ID is a primary key, we're always going to get one single note object. But because a select statement always returns an array, we're still getting an array. So every single time I'm actually going to get an array and I have to get the first object out of that array. And I don't think that's great. So instead, what I want to do is always return the first object out of that array, just to make this function work a little bit nicer. So anytime I call get note, I'm expecting a single object to come out of this. Uh, so if I run that again, there is the note with ID one. And what happens if I put in an ID that doesn't exist like 100, uh, I should just get undefined, which is exactly what I want. I try to get a note and it doesn't exist, so I get nothing. Uh, but if there was a note, then I get that note object. I wanna add one more query here, which will be to create a note using the title and the content and copilot knew exactly what I wanted to do. And in this case, the query is going to be an insert statement, just like that, where the values are coming as input to the function. So I'm going to be able to pass in a title of the note and the actual content of the note. And I'll write this insert statement again with question marks to represent the values that are coming from somewhere else. These are definitely going to be coming from a user and I don't trust them. So question marks to represent each one. And then the second thing I pass to the query function is an array of those things, of those values. So title, then content, and these must appear in the order of the question mark. So this first question mark represents the title. So title must come first in the array. The second question mark represents the content. So that must be the content in this array. And when I run this, uh, let's actually see what the result is in this case, because this is an insert statement now. So I'm gonna have this function just return the result. 
And then I'm going to call this create note. Oh, look at that. Test, test. Why not? Uh, and then console log that result right there. So let's see what we're getting from the database when we do an insert statement. Uh, content, unknown column, content in field list. Okay, it's not content. It was contents. Aha, okay. So I messed up my SQL query. It was contents. Um, Copilot did not know what it was doing. And there we go. Okay, so this is a result set header. We're still getting an array back from the query. Uh, we get a result set header where it tells us uh, how many rows were affected. In this case, I created a brand new row, so that's one. Uh, and it gives us the insert ID. So this is kind of useful. I know the new primary key of the row that was just inserted, uh, but that's all the information we get. We don't actually get the object back from the database. So I would say uh, that, well, this is an array, so I'm gonna do that. Um, result dot insert ID is about the only thing that I actually care about there, the only useful piece of information there. So if I run this again, I should see that the insert ID is now four because it should just increment, yeah. So I inserted a thing into the database and its primary key is four. And if I went back to the database and just ran a select star from notes, uh, I can see my new notes being added into the database there. They are being persisted and there are the primary keys, the IDs that keep incrementing. Um, but when I run that insert statement in node, I really only get the ID. And this could be fine. This is maybe good enough and I, I could potentially even uh, return an object here where I have the ID, uh, title, and content. Um, and then it would appear as though I'm returning the entire object. So if I run this insert again and console log the result, I'll see, okay, that kind of looks like the object that was added to the database. But when I insert into the database, I'm having my SQL auto generate the timestamp here. So I don't have this piece of information. So if I wanted to insert an object into the database and then also view that object as it appears in the database, so that would include the ID, any uh, default value, so in this case created, and any other values that were inserted, um, I would have to run another query to get that object from the database. So you don't have to do this, but it can be nice. Um, so I'll just show you how to do that quickly. Uh, so I'm just gonna store this in a variable, the ID of the thing that was just inserted, put that in a variable there. And then I already have a function that will get a note from the database given an ID. So I can return uh, get note with that ID. And now every time I run the create note function, I get to create a note using the title and the content. And the thing that I get back is actually the result that exists within the database. So that can be nice. Uh, and let's just run this node database. There we go, ID six title contents and the created timestamp. And that's good enough for now. I can create and query my notes in the database. Uh, so what I wanna do is look at how this could be integrated into an Express app. And to do that, I'm gonna export all of these functions so that I can use them in a different file. So I'm done with my database file now. I have all of my SQL statements and all my database logic just in this single file. Uh, so everything will just exist here. And then I'm gonna create a new file uh, called app.js. And here I'm gonna put all of my express code to create that HTTP server. And I'm not gonna go over the details of Express in this video. I do have another video where I go over how to use Express with EJS to create web applications. So you can check that out if you wanna learn more about Express. For now, I'm gonna skip over those details just so we can see how we'd use the database with it. So the first thing I need to do is actually install Express. And for this app, I actually wanna use uh, Express 5, which I think is still in beta. So this is how you have to install Express 5. And the reason I want to install Express 5 instead of Express 4 is because Express 5 has asynchronous error handling, which allows us to write code using async await that could cause an error. And then we can handle that error in a single location, which can make the code a little bit easier to write and read and run. So I'm just going to come in here and find the error handling code that I need. I'm gonna paste that block in here just so I can handle errors in one place. Uh, so I'm gonna import express from express. I'm gonna create an app from express. Uh, I have some error handling code in here. I'm gonna to have to app.listen on port. I'm actually gonna use 8080. Uh, and then I'll console log server is running on port 8080. That's good. And then I'm gonna create a get route to get the list of notes. 
And right now I'll just send back, uh, this should be the notes. Uh, and then we'll connect this up to the database in a second. I just wanna make sure all of this is working first. So if I run this by running node app JS, it should be running on port 8080. And then I'm gonna open up a Thunder client window just so I can make these requests from here. So I'll go HTTP localhost 8080 slash notes and see what I get back here. Uh, this should be the notes. Okay, so a get request to slash notes is giving me that string, but that's not very useful. What I want this to do is actually return the notes from the database. So I'm gonna import all of my database functions, which is get notes, get note, and create note into my app JS. Uh, let's see, there we go. From database.js. And inside of this app get, I'm gonna make this an async callback function. I'm gonna ask the database for all the notes. And then I'm just gonna send back the notes. That's it, get the notes from the database, send it back. And since all of the database logic is in the database.js file, my server side logic gets to stay a little bit more simple, a little bit cleaner. Uh, and if I make this request again, I should see that list of like six notes. Oh, wait, now I have to restart my server. Uh, okay, one more thing. I'm gonna npm i d nodemon, and I'm just gonna set up a quick nodemon script so that this uh, re, starts my server every single time I make a change. So I'll have npm run dev mpx nodemon app.js. I go over this stuff a little bit more in my express video. So check that out if you're more interested in this. Uh, but now if I npm run dev, it should start my server and it should always restart every single time I make a change. So now let's send this to get the notes. And here we go. This is responding to the HTTP request with that array of notes from the database. There's all six of them. That's pretty cool. Um, in my app.js, I'm gonna do this in the kind of, you know, restful way. So I'm gonna make another get request to get a single note where we can specify the ID of a note. Uh, this will be available to me in rec.params.id. So if I pass in an ID here, basically the idea would be if I go slash notes slash uh, six, I should get the sixth note. Uh, so I'm gonna pass in an ID here, whatever that is, I'll pass to get note and I'll rename this just to be more clear. And again, we're just calling these functions on the database file since we put that all in a separate file. We don't have to worry about the queries here. It keeps our server side code uh, really clean and small. Um, so that restarted already. Let's make a request to slash note slash six. We get the sixth one. If I put in five, we get the fifth one. If I put in uh, pancakes, we should get undefined. Should probably have an error case there. Um, but this does all seem to be working, so that's good. Then the final thing here is to make a post request. If I make a post request to slash notes, I'll make this async. Put in rec res. What I'm expecting the client to do when they make this request is to pass in a title and contents in the rec.body. That just, <laughs> GitHub Copilot just filled that out immediately for me. Uh, so if a title and contents is supplied in the rec.body, I'm gonna try and create a new note using that create note function in the database uh, where we pass in the title and the contents. I'm just gonna rename that to be consistent. Uh, and then this function returns the note that was just created. So if I look on the app.js side, we get the title and contents over the HTTP request. Database has no idea about HTTP. It's just a, a simple file that deals with the database. App.js has no idea about SQL, but it knows about HTTP. So it just grabs that data from the HTTP request, sends it over to the database file, tells it to create a note. This is gonna return the note that was just created. I'm gonna send that straight back to the client. Uh, and I should actually put a uh, status code of 201 here to say it was created. Um, and one more thing, because this is now a uh, JSON API, I'm gonna have to say app.use express.json, just to say that any JSON body will be accepted and passed into the rec.body object. So in my request here, I'm going to create a post request to slash notes. 
Uh, I'm gonna have to go to the body and input JSON. Ooh, I'm running out of space here. Okay. Uh, so I need a title from Thunder Client and content, just some note contents. Okay. So I'm gonna send this as the body in the post request here. Uh, send that up and it gave me a 201 response, which is what I specified. Uh, and here is the new note that was created that basically was sent through a post request to my app.js file. This data was taken from the body, passed over to this file where it was inserted into the MySQL database. And then if I were to query the database directly, I would see here exists my new note that I just created through an HTTP request. And this is kind of the full circle thing. I can use an HTTP server to interact with a database to persist data coming over those HTTP requests. And then I could connect this to something like a React app or a mobile app or an EJS app. And then I'd have a full web or mobile or even desktop application that persists data using a MySQL database. And I do wanna demonstrate that error handling code here because I think it's really nice that we can keep our queries in the database.js file and then app.js becomes really clean. But we do have to handle if there's an error. For example, if we can't connect to the database. So I could make sure this doesn't connect by inputting a wrong username like roo instead of root. Uh, and then that's gonna cause an error when we actually try to make a connection. So in my app.js, I need to handle those error cases where it can't connect to MySQL. Uh, and we can do that in Express 5 using this single middleware function. So I can log the error on the server and as the developer I can go and check the logs and fix any errors that might have happened. Uh, maybe the database went down and I just need to restart it or something. Uh, but then back to the client I need to send an error message and in this case I'm just saying something broke. Um, could add in an emoji here. There we go. Something broke. And now if I make a request to this server, uh, let's just make a get request to keep it simple. Because I've now modified it, it won't be able to connect to the database, I should get that error message. There we go, something broke. If I check the logs of my server, I can see that the access was denied for roo at localhost. So hopefully that would be enough of a hint to be like, okay, the username was wrong. I can go in, I can fix that. That's enough information for me. Meanwhile, the user is getting some notification that something bad happened. You know, Maybe you tell them to try again in a minute or something, I don't know. But you do have to make sure that you're handling all of these error cases and you don't just let your application crash if there's an error or anything like that. So now we have the database file that connects to the MySQL database and runs all of the queries. And I have my app.js file that handles the HTTP request, uses the database file to interact with data in the database. And that's it for this video. MySQL is a really powerful open source relational database management system that is great for any web app. If you made it to the end of this video, please leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this video and let me know if there's any other topics that you would like me to cover in other videos. Yo, I pitch wisdom for the kids them. Solid as a prism keeps a funky rhythm.